With this model then, we'll also try and take off in stabilised mode. Now, I've got no steering on this, so it could be interesting. And eventually she got off the ground, <laughs> full throttle. For those unfamiliar, the BIM D, D standing for Delta, Delta Wing, is a little flight controller, gyro, six axis gyro, that can help maintain and stabilize your flight. It only has the three connections here, the right and left elevon and the throttle. There's no signal on the fourth pin there and this is our S bus or PPM input. In this case it's coming from this tiny little radio link receiver as S bus. You can see the thing is even smaller than an SD card and it does have a sibling which is the BIME A for conventional aircraft with separate rudder, elevator and aileron control. The little guy then is very straightforward. It comes pre-programmed. There is no way to change any of the parameters like PIDs and all that advanced stuff. It is what it is out of the box. One small button at the end here allows you to reverse the servos. That's really only applicable to obviously the elevons on one and two, not the throttle. The throttle is reversed by default which matches most radio setups. Being so simple, you would think it's just plug and play, away you go. I've seen many people having problems with these little controllers though, searching the internet for RC groups, forums, and other YouTube videos saying that it doesn't work or they have problems with it working. It does in fact have uh, some rather, how can we say, unique features if you're trying to test it on the bench which we will come around to. But first, let's just take a look at the documentation and we'll see how the gyro is set up. Not surprisingly then, the BIMD is designed, as I said, for elevator aileron or elevon, SU27, F22 type models and supports S-Bus and PPM signals. It has three modes, stabilized, acrobat and manual mode. I prefer to call Acrobat just gyro mode. That's just me. Some examples. The left hand servo, right hand servo and throttle and the signal as I've discussed before and just the servo reverse there. Importantly though we have an arrow. It doesn't matter which way up the device goes but this arrow must point towards the front. Tiny size and weight. Three axis gyroscope and three axis accelerometer. Input voltage 5 to 6 volts, usually that is supplied via a BEC on the speed controller. Very simple installation. The next section is very important. The flight modes are selected on channel 5, which should be assigned to a three-way switch to give us our stabilised gyro and manual modes. This next piece is something that has caught some people out. You also have to assign channel 7 to a switch. Channel 7 overrides the throttle, or as it says here, somewhat unhelpfully, motors unlocked or locked. When you're setting your transmitter up, clearly it would be best to have the throttle locked when the transmitter is powered up. If you don't assign this channel, and depending on your transmitter setup, you will hear the speed controller on the model just simply beeping and that beeping means that there's no signal getting to it because it's disabled via channel 7. So make sure you have this set up. Another important point here is that once you connect your battery or power the model on, you must make sure that the aircraft is still and stable so that the BIMD can calibrate itself. The green light on the BIMD will flash until it's locked. Another thing that's recommended is to calibrate your attitude. This is then the attitude that the plane is desired to keep to maintain level flight. Usually that will be a nose up by possibly 15 or 20 degrees. 
to achieve that on your transmitter, pull both sticks down and to the outside corners. Now, this is another gotcha. You may find that this doesn't work with your particular radio setup, and it's usually due to the configuration of the endpoints. In your transmitter setup, make sure that your low point is at a thousand microseconds, the midpoint at 1500, and the top at 2000. Otherwise, you might find that this does not work. Obviously, it's very important to make sure that your servos are moving in the correct sense before you attempt to fly it. This has to be done in manual mode. And here they're showing a Mode 2 transmitter as an example. This should be no surprise to anybody that's set a model up before. However, there is something to consider here which is true of all gyros, and that is to check that when the gyro is making the movements that the surfaces still move in the correct direction. It's quite possible for everything to look correct as you're moving the sticks on your transmitter, but when you move the aircraft, the servo moves in the wrong direction, and that is simply fixed by changing the servo phase on the BIMD itself. One short press will reverse the aileron function, and two short presses will reverse the elevator function. Finally then, there is a rather ambiguous note at the end of the manual talking about gyro sensitivity. To different models, if the BIMD undercorrect or overcorrect, pilots can try adjusting the rudder angle. This appears to be a Chinglish translation. What it actually means is that as there is no way of controlling the PID on the BIMD itself, you have to physically adjust it by moving your servo positions on the control surface that you want to affect, i.e. moving your control linkage to different holes either on the servo or on the control horn on the control surface, or even both. With that out of the way then, let me show you it set up on the two different models that you saw flying at the beginning, and I'll take you through a, a typical setup. This model then I am flying using the Radiolink AT10 transmitter and I'll be doing a full review on this in a later video. I very much like this servo display that you can see here and we can see the aileron movements there. This is obviously in manual mode and the elevator movement there. A huge amount of movement. Now, that will become relevant a little bit later. Also, possibly you can hear that the speed controller is just beeping. On channel 7 here, if I now move the switch, the ESC is now armed. And clearly, when you're testing anything on the bench, remove the propeller. So now that is ready to go. Another thing to note is that neither the gyro or stabilised mode will work until the throttle is armed. Channel 5 here then is our selector for gyro or manual mode, and that's assigned to the switch here. If I now put that in the mid position, the craft is now in a gyro mode. You can probably hear but not see very well the movements that it's making. As it's in gyro mode, the corrections are only momentary to correct any buffeting from wind, etc. It's not until we put it into stabilised mode that you'll see the control surfaces move and stay in a fixed position. If I move that now, we can clearly see the action back into gyro mode now. One thing to note is that when you're testing this particular gyro, it's virtually impossible to test it on the bench. You'll see that even with the plane stationary, if I put it into stabilised mode, 
we get full deflection on the control surfaces. If that happened in reality, then clearly the craft would just spiral into the ground. But the way the BIM-D works is that you have to be flying the model. You can't simulate it on the bench very easily, certainly not in stabilized mode. In gyro mode, as we have here, it's a little bit easier to see. The trick when checking any gyro is that the control surface should move in the same direction as any input. Therefore, if we watch this control surface here and I tilt the model, you should see that the control surface moves up briefly to correct that input and then level itself. Similarly, if I pitch the aircraft up, I'm not sure if you can see there, but pitching it up also causes the control surface to move up, thus correcting the pitch. If I try it with nose down. It's difficult to see, as I say, but that is how you test it. So if the wing tilts this way, the control surface should move up, and this way it should momentarily move down. Clearly in gyro mode you still have full manual control. Now the amount of movement on the control surfaces is extreme. To counter that ex extreme movement, I'll put it back into manual mode. The dual rates there for the elevator and similarly for the aileron function. Now, although the dual rates on the transmitter affect the stick movement, it does not restrict the amount of movement that the gyro can input. And this is where we come back to the gyro sensitivity or the PID, of which we have no control on the BIME. We would have to move the surfaces manually. I can show you the result of not doing that now in another bit of the video footage. <laughs> Look at that oscillation. I'm not quite sure what's causing that oscillation. Some interaction between the, the gyro and the control surfaces, clearly. I've gone ahead then and mechanically changed the amount of throw on this Elevon. I can demonstrate that by just pulling the elevator down. You can hopefully see now that this Elevon has only approximately half of the movement of the original. I'm hoping that on my next outing that will stop the model from doing that oscillation, although it was quite an interesting dance. Just to show you then, this is the original arrangement with it on the top hole on the servo and the second hole down at the end there. In the new arrangement, I've moved the control horn to the outermost hole and moved the servo connection down to the third hole there. And that is giving us approximately half the amount of throw that we used to have. That will be then the maximum throw that the gyro will be able to input and stop the oscillation. There we have it then, my introduction to the BIMD flight controller. It is fixed function, it is what it is, but I think it performs very well. I flew my bonsai model today in some quite strong winds and the gyro and stability mode saved me more than once with an unplanned encounter with terra firma, for which I'm very grateful. The strange behaviour in stabilised mode on the bench, I'm afraid you'll just have to live with. There is no control over that. As I showed earlier, if you want to check the movement of the surfaces, do that in the gyro mode. Many thanks for watching.